Uh, the other um, uh, recurring um, thing which keeps coming in Tirupugal in Kandapurana that uh, Muruga is Arumuga Shivan. So, when Shiva Piraman is already there and uh, why is Muruga created, one thing. Second is when he is in his uh, complete uh, uh, yoga state, the devas actually send Kamadeva to you know shoot arrows at him and then create desire, where, where, whereas he is beyond all of that. So, what is this idea of the Supreme, which is Shiva, and you need Devi to come into the picture, and then Muruga is created from the sparks? So, why is that happening? Uh, there's so much of important to all these uh, stories. But let's try and make it very simple. Surapadma's request was that he should not be destroyed by Shiva, but then he should he may be destroyed by Shiva's amsa. Mm. And uh, he thought that Shiva would not destroy him because he was a devotee of Shiva. So the God is kind of indicating just because you make pujas, just because you say that you have devotion, you cannot still be against dharma. Mm. So God has his own way of establishing dharma. Mm. And that is where Shiva Kumara comes in. It is not Shiva directly, like you know, we tend to think one image and that is God. But then there is so much of godliness around that you try to go against dharma and still say I am praying to you and I can do anything just because I am a devotee. God has his own way of establishing the dharma, maybe taking another form or bringing in another manifestation. And uh, they sent karma, the devas sent karma, their way of understanding the emergence of a Shiva Kumara was only by a kind of man-woman unification. Correct. Right? Because that's all. Yeah, that is, that is what goes in. We tend to think that man-woman relationship and unification only begets a child. Right. But then let's understand God is not gender-based or gender-biased. Right. Both ways. Godliness is all-pervading. And for us to understand, godliness manifests into a kind of a godhead, maybe a male godhead and a female godhead. Mm -hmm. The male godhead is what we try to understand. Like, you know, for a human mind, if you say abstract things, it's difficult to understand or even visualize. Mm -hmm. So for the sake of visualization, the story was given like, you know, there is a male god and then his energy becomes the female form, the feminine form. But then there is no difference between the two. Both are united. His grace, his own grace. Yes, and that's what we uh, say, you know, when, whenever there is grace, uh, the technical term to say God's grace is Shakti Nipadam. Nipadam is falling down. Yeah. So the grace is falling down. And uh, let's not think, just because we say grace is falling down, is, grace is not, uh, you know, reaching at a higher level. Mm -hmm. It is not so. It is, it is a way of symbolically representing grace is falling down. Sharing. Yeah, sharing. Yeah. And that is what is Shakti. Mm -hmm. So, and to establish a kind of a visual image, the male gender and the feminine form were given. That is all. And uh, Shiva Kumara originated from the eye on the forehead right. and he came from fire mm. and we tend to think the fire which eliminated Kamadeva mm. also gave rise to Shiva Kumara mm. Mm. and Kamadeva is the uh, again the feelings and the emotions and whatever that comes out of the human mind right. Right. but you control that you will be able to see divinity. Right. It is the same eye which annihilated Kamadeva, right. but which also gave rise to Shiva Kumara. Right. So control the 
emotions control the superficial facets and there lies inside divinity yeah and it's so such a contrast akka because surapadma is begetted only by desire and and muruga is exactly where desire is desire is subdued and jnanam jnanam comes out or that light comes out right. and there's another uh, uh, thing that we need to understand there the the small little uh, ball of fire emanates mm. from the eye from the netrikan mm. and then shiva commands agni deva to carry that little ball of fire mm. agni deva mm. who's the right. god of fire himself the deity of fire is not able to hold yeah. that little ball so he seeks help from vayu deva and both of them carry like you know alternatively carry it carry it to the saravana poigai mm. now again look at the name what is saravanam saram is something to do with the bamboo family mm. either it is bamboo or the nanal which is also part of the bamboo family mm. and if there is a small little speck of fire anywhere near bamboo the whole area catches fire and gets destroyed mm. but here there is a saravanam mm. and this little ball of fire is brought there and there is a small little pond you keep an intense ball of fire in a small little pond the natural reaction that we should expect is that the pond is made devoid of water right all the water kind of evaporates right. when you place fire there but then here is a unique situation this little ball of fire dipped into that pond transforms itself into a small child mm. so it again is a kind of an indication yes fire but fire when placed in love when placed in devotion right transforms itself into flower mm. and that is where the child was and then hence ha- accessible then it's no yes. more not that something yeah. which is dreaded yeah. not something that you have to keep away from but then something which is very accessible and something which wherein you can go closer and try to kind of you know uh, become proximal become near and things like that and again there were six women mm. and god is willing to you know transform or willing to give all of them whatever they want yeah. it is again devotion being granted Absolutely. so uh, every bit of it has some kind of an information right. for the human mind to grasp and learn from